Are you seriously telling me that there's another illness that we have to worry about in the air? Find out today on Medical History Mysteries. We've been through enough with COVID and all the other things that we're dealing with. You're saying now that there is a resurgence of an oldie that we now have to worry about? Tell us about it. It's an oldie, but not a goodie. How about that? This is measles, and it's back. Can you believe it? I no. thought we were done with measles once and for all. I mean, we got COVID. We've got, you know, all these other things to worry about, you know, RSV. And now we've got measles on top of it. And really, I thought everybody was vaccinated with the MMR, but I realized there are people out there that don't want to be vaccinated. And I understand maybe that's their personal, you know, opinion and, and their personal preference. But, you know, because dentistry is so inter intricate, well, intricately involved in healthcare, and because we're dealing with sputum, we're dealing with aerosols, we're dealing with, you know, uh, bodily fluids, it's possible that if one of your team members, let's say, is has not been vaccinated due to personal choice, or if one of your patients isn't vaccinated, again, by personal choice, that the dental office can become a source of inoculation, right? That essentially, you know, your, your team member could get measles, your patients could get measles, because it's highly contagious and it's spread by saliva, you know, coughing, sputum, and so on. So, um, yeah. Measles is back, especially in Florida, but not just in Florida. There's been a resurgence uh, in some other parts of the country as well. And, and typically, a lot of it has to do with travel. So a common way of getting measles is, you know, you're unprotected, right? You, you decided not to get the vaccine, the MMR vaccine. You go traveling abroad, you pick up measles, you come home, and you've got the usual symptoms, the, the three C's they call it, you know, the cough, uh, the coryza, the runny nose, and the conjunctivitis, the pink eye. And so you're, you've got everything that measles, you know, indicates, but how many people recognize measles when they see it? You know, people cough, people get runny noses, people get pink eye, you know, but those three now, you know, with the rash, especially on the face, uh, indicate that the patient's infected. And if you're not protected yourself, you can easily get measles again in a dental office. Now we're not trying to have a riot here on medical history mysteries. So Correct. Right. But I'm just going to ask, has the resurgence come because of a result of people not vaccinating their children? Like, where is this even coming from? Well, that's the thing. I think that that it could be that people have decided not to vaccinate themselves, not to vaccinate their children. OK, it could also be that maybe you received your MMR vaccine a long, long time ago. And maybe it's time for a booster. And I think it had to be somewhere after 1950 something that you had to have your, if you were born 1957 or later, uh, you probably got one dose. Uh, but you, many people required two doses. Again, it really depends also on your current health status. If you are immunocompromised for whatever reason, if you take, as I like to say, just another MAB, right? Every drug commercial on TV, blah, 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 MAB at the end, right? Any one of these biologics, you know, you may be at higher risk for communicable diseases like measles. So it really, it's important for both our team members and our patients to be in contact with the healthcare provider to find out if they're at risk and if so, what they can do to prevent it. So at this point, as dental health care providers, being aware of it is important. Obviously, making sure that you wear your PPE and using proper precautions that you can use in your practice. Should we be maybe going for a tighter? Well, I think it's, it's something that we should consider. Uh, the problem we have is that many patients are immunocompromised. And if they are, they're told not to get the vaccine, right? Because it, it could cause harm to them. So they're in this weird state where they're immunocompromised and yet, and are likely to get the disease, but they're also not good candidates for the vaccine because they're immunocompromised. So they're in this gray area. And, and so what do you do? PPE, certainly, right? Um, but obviously the patient can't wear PPE when you're working on them. Uh, so yeah, may, uh, maybe a tighter, I, you know, I don't know enough about measles, the current version of measles that's out there 
to to know if a titer would be something that we could consider but it, it may be definitely a, a conversation to have with your your gp i just wanted to bring it to everyone's attention because travel is going to become much more common over the next few months um and and we've already started to see this outbreak if you will uh, in, in florida and, and some of the warmer climates so it's bound to get throughout the united states as well and i don't think we have a really good idea of how many people are just not immunized who've chosen not to be immunized um i don't know if there's a database for that and if there is i don't know if it's widely shared so you as the dental professional may not have any access to that and not know so it's important to look for the signs of contagion, right? Look for the, like I said, the three C's, the rash. Ask people about if they've been you know, traveling abroad, you know, and so on, if, if it looks like they've got some type of uh, symptoms. And, and definitely have a talk with your staff to make sure they're protected. If you contract measles or if a patient contract, if anyone contracts measles, is it sort of like COVID where you are good to go for a little bit? Do you have a natural immunity if you've, current, if you've contracted it? I believe there is some natural immunity, but I think ultimately the, the, the benefit of the vaccine outweighs the risk. I think getting measles is never a good thing because you can have long, lifelong complications afterwards. Uh, there have been some pa patients who've had some uh, long lasting uh, uh, problems with uh, their brain and, and, and brain development and loss of cognition. Uh, later in life because they contracted measles when they were earlier. It's just not, it's just not a good thing to have. Uh, I would think, you know, if I, if that were me and I chose not to be vaccinated, I'd have to seriously consider, okay, the risk of the vaccine is what it is, but what is the long-term effects and, and, and risks of contracting measles? I'm not sure. Again, that's a personal decision for everybody to make, but I'm not sure I I'd, I'd think that getting the measles and getting that natural immunity uh, is worth the risk, ultimately, of lifelong complications. Well, thanks for bringing that to my attention and to the attention of dental professionals and patients and everybody out there that follows Medical History Mysteries. Thank you, everybody. Looking forward to next time. Thank you so much. Until then, everyone, see you next time.